In the region known as the Shefela, or Judean lowlands, this area has for centuries been a crossroads for travelers moving north and south, east and west between Europe, Africa, and Asia. Covering an area over 10,000 square miles, the Bet Guvrin National Park encompasses the remains of the town of Maresha. The biblical six-acre tell, or ancient mound of Maresha, is the oldest site in the park and was built to defend against marauding Egyptian pharaohs. This site was destroyed many times and built all over again. Haji Yohanan is an archaeologist and expert in deciphering the clues left behind. Maresha is cited as a fortified city that was built by Rehavam, king of Judea. He managed to defend it from the Egyptian pharaoh Shishak, who came to conquer this city and didn't succeed. Ancient Maresha enjoyed its most successful period of peace and prosperity during the third and second centuries BCE. Maresha was a cosmopolitan center. It was an economic magnet. We are right now in ancient Maresha, a city mentioned four times in the biblical text. Archaeologist and director of the Maresha Project, Dr. Ian Stern, is an expert on the region's rich history. This was a city that, at its peak, contained close to 10,000 people. Jews, Edomites, Phoenicians, Egyptians, all sorts of people mixed here, lived, thrived, traded, and brought their various cultures basically to shine in a city like this. And while this region has a tumultuous history, dating back over 2,000 years, its geology tells its own unique story. The land under Bet Guvrin Maresha is unusual. The geology of the region basically has about a meter and a half of very hard rock called Nari. But if one could penetrate with their iron tools, about a meter and a half down, they came to a very soft rock called Kirton, which is like chalk. Once they hit the chalk level, they belled out. Belling out allowed them to create a quarry. Among the many caves in the area, the park contains over 800 bell-shaped caves. Many of these structures are linked together via underground tunnels. The largest bell caves are located to the east side of the park and were initially excavated for chalk. You can see here the beginning of the quarrying of new bricks. In actuality, they would have now, the next step would have been to carve away here and bring another brick out. Here's one typical brick, but if we look at the wall over here, one can see that they went Line by line, these bricks were taken out and they were used to build their homes on the surface. The soft chalk made it easy for inhabitants to hollow out subterranean facilities, thousands of them. Once they had built their homes, they then had a hollow space underground. It could then be converted into rooms that had a functional value. Cool and comfortable in the summertime, and it is basically dry in the winter which means everything inside here is preserved very well. This complex here has over 30 interconnecting rooms. Soon, the people of Maresha realized the caves they dug in the limestone rock could serve another purpose, one that would supply the town's inhabitants with a vital human necessity. Maresha is located in an arid area where water is definitely needed. The large caves were used partially as a water cistern. The chalk is watertight. They were draining the roofs of the buildings on top and then drained into the water cistern. The water cistern were full and in this arid area, you have to accumulate large amount of water in order to hold through the summer. In the years that followed, as the city's needs evolved, the quarries were converted into baths, tombs, and places of worship. 
Among the most remarkable caves in the park are the burial caves, excavated when the city was under Greek rule and named Sidon. They're known as the Painted Caves. This burial cave called the Apollopones Cave. Apollopones was the head of the Sidonian community. This person believed in the Greek mythology because Phoenix symbolized the life after death. Apollopones, as the head of the family, was buried in this chamber. He was one of the richest person in this city. You can see that by the very nice paintings on the wall. When we walk around, we'll see the chambers where people were buried, their corpses were laid over here. After a year, when the remains are only bones, you collect the bones and make room for the other deceased. The only deceased that is left in his place is the head of the family, Apollo Panis. These caves were also used for the living. And some of the most magnificent caves are the columbarium, used to house and harvest turtle doves. Doves were highly praised for their eggs, their meat, and for their droppings. The doves and their droppings, which were used as fertilizer, were highly sought after. It was also very important for sacrifice in the Jewish and the pagan cultures. So we're in the middle of the Columbaria Caves. It is 60 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 20 feet high. This Columbaria is one of the biggest that we have in Maresha. The niche that are carved into the chalk, starting at nine feet, in order to prevent predators getting to the doves inside the niche. The doves were the most precious things in this cave. The caves contains about 2,000 niche all over. Hellenistic Maresha fell in 167 BC during the Maccabean Revolt. The region has always been a prized territory and considered worth fighting for because it's a crossroads for people traveling between Europe, Africa, and Asia. In 40 AD, King Herod attacked and wiped the city from the map, replacing it with the newly built Bet Guvrin. Sixty years later, Rome made its mark on the region, when General Vespasian invaded, slaying an estimated 10,000 people. Haji has studied the area's volatile history in detail. Despite the fighting and killing, the people of this country lived on a small militia of Jewish rebels just sat inside hiding caves. The hiding caves were carved into places where the Roman couldn't enter. Confined to the narrow tunnels, these resistance fighters battled on. This is a place for living and surprising the Roman legionaries that were looking for the rebels. Roman military prowess eventually dislodged this rebel militia. The Romans take them out by using smoke. Just imagine living inside those tunnels. In 135 AD, Emperor Severus renamed Bet Guvrin the City of the Free. A Roman amphitheater it was built in the second century AD to hold gladiator wars, to amuse the Roman legions who were left here after the suppression of the Bar Kokhba revolt. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Bet Guvrin changed hands several more times. The caves of Bet Guvrin and Maresha have been a treasure trove for archaeologists for more than a hundred years. <laughs> 